Good. Let's roll. I was popping everybody. Welcome to episode 54 of the podcast. It's been a fucking minute. Uh, we just kind of been on the move, but now we're finally settled down in Miami. And this man is new to Miami. What's up? What's up? Matt Lorian, teenage millionaire. Thank you for hopping on the podcast. Appreciate we appreciate it. it. So we're going to dive a little bit into his story, any advice, tips he would have for the common uh, common knowledge, I suppose. And we're just gonna we're just gonna free ball it as we usually do and just flow. So, Matt, start us off. With like age, where you from, all the all the basics. Yeah, dude, I got so many questions. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> excited for this. I really am. Well, uh, what's up, guys? My name is Matt Lorian. 18 years old, just moved to Miami two weeks ago, two or three. And then this stud, he uh, <laughs> wanted to meet up a couple days after I came here, and we've been boys ever since. Yeah. Just met Abe. Uh, once again, awesome dude. Of course. And uh, yeah, that's my intro. So. You're from where? Massachusetts? Massachusetts, man. Man, just a kid from Massachusetts, bro. So, yeah. you were telling me yesterday at dinner, you started with a YouTube channel. Tell us a little bit about how that all evolved. Bro, I was addicted big time to uh, video games, Xbox, Arc Survival. You ever heard of that game? No. <laughs> me neither, me uh, neither, yeah, though. No. Nah, it's, dude, you would. It's such a fun game. It's like an open world survival game. Do whatever you want. Oh, so it's kind of like a, like a Sky GTA, Skyrim, Skyrim type shit? Skyrim, GTA, like Dope. kind of a mix, yeah. Dope. Exactly, and I was addicted to it. I would play thousands of hours on that game. And then I was like, why not make this into a source of income? Mm -hmm. You know, start making some money from and it. And you were 14 when you thought of that? I was 14, yeah. That's wild. That's, That's fucking crazy. Started your YouTube channel? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, when I was 14, bro, I did not... I, just, I had no fucking drive to make money. I was just like, fuck it, like I'm just gonna play Call of Duty and just be good at it, you know? Like, well, you were you were living life. You were chillaxing. You were, chillaxing. You were enjoying your childhood. Yeah. Something that I never had. So uh, I'm jealous of that. Okay, you know, it's valid. Ups and downs. It's valid. Why? Like, why do you say that? Because I spent so much time working on myself. I didn't spend enough time with the friends and the people around me and almost pushed them away in the process. And now looking back on it, I didn't even have like a senior year. I can't remember it. Because you were just grinding the whole time? Yeah. The whole time. I dropped out. I did drop out. I switched to online. That way I could get it all done. Didn't see anybody, dude. Just focus on my stuff. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Do you regret it or are you happy you did it because you're here now? Overall, I'm happy I did yeah. it. Yeah, I, I would be too. For sure. I would be too. I mean, for sure. I, I can relate to the fear, not the fear, because at this point it's not fear, like you already kind of like met, quote unquote missed out, because for me it was a similar experience, like I was just so in my own lane, that I didn't really like, a party, not like most people did, so me in college, because I was just so focused on like, building myself, building my businesses, and I was like, kind of like at the time, you, you almost feel a little bit out of place. You know, but now, like, looking back, like, dude, you're in Miami, you're 18, you're a fucking millionaire. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All the people that you didn't see are probably just like, damn, I, I wish I would have done what this dude did. Like, holy fuck. Yeah. So, and, 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 dude, at 18, I'm 25, at 20, like, we're just getting started. Mm. Like, bro, you have seven years on Abe. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Oh, That's fucking crazy. When did you start, by the way? All your stuff, like your entrepreneurship. I think as entrepreneurs, like, we started show entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship tendencies from like way young. Right. So like for example, like starting a YouTube channel at fourteen. Like I remember my first YouTube channel. My first like it was about magic. Like I used to do magic back when I was like twelve. Abe the magic man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So so you start seeing how you start taking these hobbies and trying to turn them into things. Right. And I think that's where like like your inner entrepreneur. So I would say like I started a long time ago, but like officially. Jumping into entrepreneurship was when I dropped out of college. And I was just like, all right, like, I'm committing to this. And it's, uh, it's been a journey since. Yeah, yeah. so like 20, 22? Hey, I would say, yeah, I would say around like 20, 21. That's okay. when I like fully jumped out. That's fucking dope. And you didn't even, weren't you, I feel like I, would, I talked to you at some point and you were like, bro, I might drop out of high school. Did you ever con contemplate that? I did. Dude, I think it was beginning of senior year. I'm like, is this even worth it? You know, it was COVID. That was just like not even. This dude posts the hardest Instagram picture I've ever seen. It says, wow. it says, uh, wow. happy graduation or some shit. He's got his Corvette and his <laughs> Tesla in the background. I'm like, oh my fucking God. That's the yeah. biggest flex I've ever seen in my life. But it was like a very humble flex because like 
This dude's too humble, bro. Like, he's, he's so humble to the point where I'm like, bro, you gotta talk your shit a little bit sometimes. Like, so what was the most amount of money you've lost in a day? Most amount I've lost, it wasn't even a day, it was more like two hours. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> $380,000. In a fucking two hours. two hours, bro. That's some people's like four year salary. Yeah. yeah a lot of school teachers, like they were like 60, 70K. Weren't you like yeah. in the movie theater? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I was in the movie theater <laughs> watching the movies and I went out to go take a piss and I'm looking at it and I just see my, my, my trade going thousands and thousands down. And the worst part is, that was the most money I had seen in my life at the time. I was 16 when it happened, and I saw it all go away. And, uh, so, at 16, you're having <laughs> a $340,000 drop in net worth. It's right. fucking insane. When did you start like actually making, like bringing a lot of money into Well, I made life? my first six figures when I was 15. Wow. It was, it was from the YouTube channel, yeah, like the AdSense that yeah. I... I don't know, did I tell you when I sold it? When they, you got 50k from it, right? Yeah, and then I sold 50K. that, got some money from it. At 15? You got 50k at 15? I don't even know what the fuck I'd do with that. I'd go to fucking Nike and just yeah. I would blow that bitch, yeah. Yeah, I mean a lot of kids, they love like Gucci and all that. You know, back in school, they would wear the Gucci, the Yeezys. Got into it for a little bit, but I don't know. I just didn't see a lot of value in it until until like now, where it's like, I don't know. They're just comfortable shoes. Uh, Are they actually comfortable? Yeah, dude, really? they're so comfortable. They got like the uh, the squishy stuff in the bottom. Oh, the Yeezys? Yeah, the Yeezys look dope. Do you like Yeezys? I don't have them. I've worn them, but yeah. yeah the Yeezys yeah. are comfortable as fuck. Yeah. So tell us, tell us about the time you went bankrupt. Oh, jeez. Had to start from zero. Yeah, it was it was shortly after I lost the, the 380. I only had like 10, 20k left. And um, pretty much I, I kept trying to start new businesses. I was trying to do drop shipping, trying to scale my brand, and I just kept losing money. I couldn't get it, dude. And I used the, the last of my money on some mentorships. And, uh, That's a fucking stud move. Powerful. Yeah, learned technical analysis for trading, so I used that on crypto, forex, and uh, stocks. And then I also learned how to build a brand through another guy. And then I, at that point, I almost used all my money, so I had to sell all my designer stuff, my Yeezys, my Supreme, I bought a, some stupid stuff. At least they hold their value, right? Yeah, yeah, at least they held their value. Yeah. You know. Sold that and got a couple grand, started back up from there. And how old were you when that happened? I was 16. 16. I was 16. It was, it was like a mid, what do you call it, mid -length? A mid-teen crisis. A mid-teen crisis. <laughs> crisis. <laughs> That's a mid so at this point, you're shifting directions because it sounds like you're you're doing the YouTube stuff and you take this technical analysis course right. that sets you on like a new path. Mm. At this point, like you're quote unquote broke, even though at 16, like most people are going to have 500 bucks in their name. 10 to 20k, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Where do yeah. things go from here? I like that you noticed that. I like that you noticed the shift. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. There was uh, a huge shift because now not only did I know how to record content and do video editing, I just expanded my knowledge to now trading and running businesses. So I tried to put all of it into one, and that's when I started my TikTok page while continuing to build my brands, like my drop shipping and different, different uh, e-commerce brands that I had at the time, while trading using the profits that I made from those businesses. So it was almost just scaling up like three to four different sources of income, building the foundation for it. By the time I turned 17, it was just printing money in, in every single one of them. It took a year to build back up, but then I got to the point where uh, I started sharing that knowledge on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Alex told you about the TikTok yeah, stuff. He's got a million on TikTok, so. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, lots of stuff. When, when did you start creating content on TikTok? Right, right at the beginning of COVID, dude. Yeah. It's like school so style. Very similar mm -hmm. to. Like, that's what we was made it. Yeah, I was a little yeah. before COVID, but then, like, once COVID, so I just saw it as an right. opportunity. Like, holy shit, every human is sitting on their phone right now. Yeah. So that's you just took advantage of it. Yeah. And that, dude, COVID times, like, it was. Everyone was growing so fast. Did you see growth? Yeah. Oh my god, I was getting like 100K a month, bro. It was fucking ridiculous. And now I gain like 30, 40K on like a good month. Because like it's just so much more competitive now. Because all these people see like, oh my god, people are moving to Miami from TikTok and shit. So now everybody's like trying to do it for themselves. But like the thing is, it's like 
getting big on TikTok is not going to make it happen, you know, like you have to have a business side to it and that's what people don't see, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, what would your, like, biggest piece of advice to all the people that, all the young people out there that want financial freedom, what, what would you, what would you tell them? I'll tell you my side, then I want to hear you guys too. Mm -hmm. I want to see what you think about that. So what's the, the biggest key to financial freedom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perseverance. That's, that's the best way to put it because uh, if, if not for the failures, I wouldn't be here. You know, like I could, there's very a small amount of people that I've heard of and I've met that have just made it up their first go. They just they hit it rich, ripped up rich quick. Doesn't happen. It, I mean, it happens, but like 0.1 person, like so small. <laughs> yeah. dude, so small. And, and it was just learning from the failures and taking that, that failure and seeing it as a lesson, not really like a failure, so, not really, a, almost just a, a hiccup in, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme mm -hmm. of things. In learning from it, so the understanding failure essentially, because there's really no such thing as failure, you know, it's just like a lesson. Feedback. Yeah. Feedback, yeah, yeah, feedback, great word for it. About so that's about it's still, dude, for financial abundance, you're still not settling, truthfully, like, I was thinking about this today, like, there's people, there's literally people out there that work jobs for a boss they don't like, and the boss literally like demoralizes these people, and they still work for them. Mm. Like it, that, that fucking, I, I could never do it. Like I can't work, really work for anybody else because like that's just you can't settle for that because it's like it's your life. So like that's that's when I was in college, I was like, all right, this shit's affecting me like mentally. Like why am I here? There's no reason to be here right now because like this is my life, right? Like this is my life. So. Understanding that it is your life, and then you, you get clear on what you want, like what business you kind of want to start, and then just like you said, persevering, like all right, I want to do this, I love this, and when you do something that you love, it doesn't necessarily feel like work, you know, it just feels like you're flowing, it just feels like you're flowing. So find something that you love, and if you don't know what you love, you gotta you gotta try shit, you gotta try new shit until you find something that you're like, all right, I can make money doing this, and then get clear on it. Set dates, set numbers, and just fucking grind. Really. It's oh, powerful. That's it. Thanks, bro. And if you think about it, persevering, it's, it's a way of not settling. Mm -hmm. Right? Like they're they're yeah. one and the same. Yeah, yeah. Because you're just like, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it. I'm going to go after that vision. I'm going to make it happen regardless of whatever setbacks or yeah. fa or what failures come my way. Yeah, dude. I think, I think both of us are good. Uh, for me, I would just say finding ways to provide value, you know? Mm, uh, that's fire. And, and finding ways to provide value where you're providing tons of value to someone. Not because here's where I see a lot of entrepreneurs, like, they try to start a business providing little amounts of value to someone. Maybe, like, let's say the coaching space, I'll give you an hour of my time. And, like, you provide some value, but it's little, and it's very hard to fucking yeah. build financial abundance if I'm only providing you a little bit of value, but if I find a way to transform your life in 12 weeks, in 18 weeks, now we're talking, like that's a massive amount of value that I'm bringing to someone, and therefore I get rewarded in proportion to, to that value. Um, that's fire. One of the cool things, and I see this in your journey, and, and you're still, a, to build financial abundance today, you have to experiment. Because all these little ex experiments, for example, in your case, like building a YouTube channel, learning how to create content, right, and learning how to utilize the internet to, to do things. And these are all experiments that are teaching you skills. And these skills, they're like multipliers. They start multiplying against each other. And eventually, like, you get, you come to a place where they just synchronize in the right, like, yeah, in the right way, and it's just like, Pfft. That synchronicity is huge. Yeah. Synchronicity is fucking huge, bro. Dude, you're a good communicator. You're really good. <laughs> you can Thank you, brother. Wow, that, that really, that, whew, you, feel, you feel the emotion when you speak. I like that. Yeah, see, see he's a good, uh, good listener. Yeah. I was telling him about that because, like, when I was, like, that first night we hung out, you were asking questions, and then, like, you kind of reciprocate back what I'll be explaining. I'm like, all right, he fucking understands it. <laughs> like, it like, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's fucking nice because that makes people want to fucking explain things yeah. more when people are actually, like, receptive of it. And you need yeah. both. Like you need both, both in a yeah. conversation. Yeah. There's nothing worse than being in a conversation where like someone's just trying to be heard. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like that's it's, it's a one-way thing. Yeah, it's gotta it's be. Tough.
Yeah, yeah. gotta be fucking reciprocated. So, so I'm curious because we talk about your shift in direction, but at this point you're at 20k. Like, when does that multiplier kind of come yeah. into your life where yeah. you go from like fucking like 20k to fucking balling? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a good 18 one. euro a million. Like, this is bonkers. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking yeah. nuts, dude. Well, uh, when did it start multiplying? Yeah, like, like when did you experience that? Like, because at 18, dude, like if. Like things have to happen fast. I'm, I'm, I'm saying a matter of months. Yeah. If at 16 you were broke, like this is 24 months in between, right? So you, you take this program, you start heading this new direction. Like it's been, I, I don't know how long that took, but what, like 12, yeah, yeah. 16, 18 months? You gotta keep multiplying that shit. Things have to happen like super fast. You know, like the best way to relate it to is like a, a brand new company in that just released their IPO in a stock market or their brand new stock, right, that people can invest in. Mm -hmm. At first, maybe it's going like this, and then once the news comes out, <laughs> like yeah. that. And that's what happened, that's the best way to put it. I was building up different brands, they were getting consistent income, and you know, I think for a while I was dabbling around like the one to two hundred thousand dollar net worth range, yeah. uh, up until I was like seventeen and a half, and I was, I was around there. I was building brands, I was trading, just kind of building a foundation for myself mm -hmm. while also posting on social media. And then by the time, this was, it was beautiful. It was two months before I turned 18, I started getting into cryptocurrency. So I wanted to, not, I wanted to expand my knowledge in it. I had been trading it for two years at that point, but I wanted to get into the brand new, what people call penny cryptos, like the yeah. small ones. Mm -hmm. So I started experimenting with it. I started investing in the larger ones, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and the bull market definitely helped because I was putting yeah. a lot of my uh, a lot of my savings into it, investing in these small tokens. And I found oh, it was golden. I I almost found like uh, the sweet spot, like a once in a lifetime opportunity that. Everyone, I feel like everyone gets these once in a lifetime opportunities, but it's hard to capitalize on it and find it at the right time. And so Elon Musk, he tweeted, he said, if anyone makes a scandal about me, name it Elon Gate. So then, uh, 12 hours later, I get a DM from someone. And I just happened to be going through my DMs at the right time, the right place. I don't know why I was going through it. I never go through my DMs that often. And they say, hey, check out Elon Gate. Um, it was just released. It's a crypto that's based around his Twitter. So I click on it, and at first I'm like, yeah, this looks kind of scammy. You know what? I'll look into it. Looked into it, reached out to the developer, and they were legit. So they had maybe a market cap. Are you familiar with market cap and no. how that works? No. So the market cap was maybe $200,000. And I saw it. I saw Elon Musk's name behind it. I'm like, this is gold. <laughs> this is beautiful. So it was kind of risky. I took 10 Gs, and I threw it in there. And then... I checked back a couple days later, you know, it's at like 20 Gs. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, maybe I should pull out. This is looking good. But I'm like, nah, you know what? No, I believe in this thing. So I wait, I wait a week later. It's at uh, 250 grams. Oh, oh my, my god, god. dude. Yeah. 10K to 250. Yeah. Oh my fucking so I, I, I go to my dad. I'm freaking out. I'm like, dad, I got another, I got a once in a lifetime opportunity here. Do I take it? He's like, you had better take that. And I, you take it and you run with it. You did it? But I, I saw more, I, I, I just, I didn't see it, like, blow up yet. I knew it, it had more potential. To the moon! <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled out my initial investment, 10 grand. I was happy, like, I broke even at the end of the day. So you still had 240 sitting in there. Yep. And then it starts dropping a bit, goes back down to 100. I'm like, oh, mm. what's going on? So I just, I just held it. I continued to hold it. And uh, a week later, I go back to my dad. I'm showing him, like, hey, dad, it's up 1.4 million. <laughs> and, and he's like, he said, "Sir, got you on it." Like, like what? One hundred forty. So that is one point four. Just fucking like, what is that? Like, I don't know. Hundred? No, it's like ten thousand times your investment. It's, it's a lot, dude. <laughs> I don't hey, know. Fuck. I think it was. Yeah, I think it's one hundred forty times the initial. So that's fucking. And then my dad once again is like, "Pull it out, man." Like, I don't know. I kind of want to see where this goes. So I pulled out a couple, a couple hundred grand, and I invested that into crypto. <laughs> and I just, I, I took it as like a safety, you know. And then with the rest of it, I, I held it out, I let it in, and um, I ended up cashing out most of it with about, uh, I think it was two point, two point eight million dollars. 
so that's when I was I was content with it. <laughs> oh my go. fucking god! And um, yeah, no. It was Off of the fucking Elon Gate. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking nuts, bro. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the, the silliest part. But oh my god, bro. That's why. Where's, where's Elon Gate right now as a cryptocurrency? It's still a thing? It's still a thing. Yeah, yeah. the market cap's around, I believe, 70 million. And wow. At so you got in like right at the start. Yeah. That's fucking nuts, right. bro. And then you started your own crypto. And I did that, yeah. And uh, I took what I learned from Elon Gate and their community. And now we're here, man. Jesus fucking right. Emotional me. roller coaster, I'll tell Dude, you. Dude, that's epic. That's fucking epic yeah, as fuck. You. Bro, you're probably in like the point zero zero one percent Not probably, like... Certainly. <laughs> there. Certainly <laughs> there. Holy shit, I thought it was cool for being in the one percent, but like, fuck. The craziest part, it happened to a lot of other people too. Really? A lot of other... Wow. Like, there's a whole community of like... T- I would say most of them are in their early 20s, but yeah, they got in. You should have fucking Some texted me about this shit, man. I would, <laughs> I would put 10 G's in that shit. Yeah. That would now, be crazy. Oh my god. Do you think you can replicate this? Now that, that you've seen the patterns, you've seen kind of how things take off, you've been in the, this niche, this industry for quite some time. Do you feel that you will be able to do this again in the future? Because now, dude, like, you have your purchasing power is way higher than what it was back when you little, put 10k. A little bit higher. Yeah, yeah, right? A little bit higher. Well, I still do it to this day. I okay. find emerging ones. The thing is, now that, um, I don't know if you follow crypto at all, it was up around 60,000 Bitcoin, mm-hmm. and it, it saw a, a lot of a lot of FUD, a lot of bad news that came out, and we've seen a dip down around the 30,000 range. So it's almost halved because of that. A lot of the new tokens that are coming out aren't gaining as much traction. For sure. So Bitcoin's like a thermometer on the market, right? Yeah, that's kind of a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of fuels the whole market itself. Like when Bitcoin goes up, you see a lot of the other cryptos follow after. But I think I could replicate it if I found the right opportunity. But those are very, very rare. You know, it's it's hard to find them. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sure. And I found the right opportunity. You put a hundred grand into it then. Yeah. <clears throat> let your boys know. Yeah, let the fucking boys know. Let the fucking boys know. Yeah. God damn. I could have sworn I texted you, dude. You texted me about something, bro. What if you waited your text and you searched it? It's like, dude, put it in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, jeez. So, it, dude, your life went from like zero to 100 real quick. Like, you were in a totally different space uh, financially than you were a couple, like, before Elon Gate, right? How has your life changed? Like, like, what's life before and after? What's different? What feels new? What? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, one thing I can, I can, I can tell you that's different in his life is that now he has an elevator that takes him right into his crib. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty I get off the elevator. I'm like, no. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, the the main thing, I guess, is just the lifestyle. It's a little bit different, and. I was, I've almost trained myself to be very humble over the, time, over the years, so it's not like I got this money and I'm like trying to flex it all and like, hey guys, look, I just made a million. I, I didn't even talk about it on my TikTok or my that's what I was. That's why I was blown away, bro. I'm like, bro, you need to talk about this shit. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't want the attention for the wrong reasons. And I noticed that there's a lot of the wrong people coming into my life now. For sure. And at the yeah, same yeah, time... Yeah. I've noticed I can pretty much, for the most part, go anywhere, and if I want something, I can just buy it. It's, mm-hmm. it's no like I don't have to worry about that aspect of my life, the financial part. So nice. Um, and other than that, I mean that's that's the main thing. Do same person, I feel the same. I haven't like grown into it yet, so I don't really realize like other people's perspectives on it yet. And so it just for me, I still feel like. You're, you're just mad, but yeah. a couple million. So people live a lifetime, and they never get to experience the freedom of not having to worry about money. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 90% of the yeah. world, bro. Yeah, yeah, no. Like, that's like a huge weight of your shoulders. I'm curious as to how you're dealing with the wrong people coming to your life. Because, dude, like, now, I don't want to say that, that you're a target, but with cloud whether it's a million people, 1.4, or even you, like, cloud on social media, 
or, or money, like you do start attracting people that have interests beyond, like that are not so genuine, right? That see you more as like a, an opportunity rather mm -hmm. than, than just a human being that they would love to connect with. So how are you, can, how are you managing that? Do you think about that at all? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I do all the time because uh, I feel like, I mean, Alex, you can be the judge of this, but I feel like I'm fairly good at empathizing and reading people and, mm -hmm. and just being aware in that present moment of, of what the person's intentions are. Yeah. And with that, whenever I talk to someone, within a couple minutes, I think I can yeah. tell. Yeah. And if they're not meant for me, then I'll kind of keep my distance. But if they are, then I can tell. Like this, I know this guy's pretty genuine. It's like <laughs> he just wants to chill. He just wants to hang out. It's not yeah, like he's yo, well, let's go, let's go buy some cars, dude. Let's go, <laughs> let's go ball out. You know, he's just right. a genuine guy. And I feel I can tell when people are like that. Mm -hmm. you know? How about you? Can you tell when people are going yeah. after you? I would say that in terms of clout, I'm not nowhere near where you guys are at, quote unquote, like uh, where. Like I don't have a huge social media following, you know. I do notice that as I level up my energy, as I level up my reality, as I level up myself, mm -hmm. it, there is more demand on my attention, you know. And and people don't always understand that, like how valuable it is. Yeah, how valuable it is, right? And 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 I do notice people that come into your life. For example, like recently. I had a girl that came into my life and she's a coach, right? And and she she just kind of wanted to get information out of me and she was being like all flirtatious and it just felt dirty. Yeah. It just yeah. felt dirty, you know? And it's, it's just like, man, like, don't approach it this way. Like, if you want... You, you gotta know, pay 4800 baby. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't... Yeah, you can tell, you can yeah. tell. Like, Energy is very like transparent. I feel like for sure. Yeah, it's just so easy to tell. And by keeping your circle small, you don't have to deal with it as much. I mean, a smaller table and a bigger fence. I That's always, it. I always reference that. That's it. That's that rust bar. Yeah. How big is your circle, dude? Not that big. I mean, in Ohio, it's fucking huge. But it's just like those are just like the homies, right? But down here, it's like you two, your boys, and I just met like four other dudes. The ones we hooped with. Those, those dudes are dope. Oh, that's right. And Gunner. Uh, you haven't met Gunner. Gunner's a baller. I actually, I actually have a pretty big circle. But everyone in my circle is dope. Like, right. yeah, you'll meet all of them. But, like, they're, they're all genuine dudes. Where, like, they have their own, their own shit. So it's like they're not going to mooch off of me because they have their own shit. Right, right. So, like, that's the dope thing about living in Miami is because everybody's on their own shit. Like, no one's down here to mooch unless you're, like, a girl, like, looking for a sugar daddy. Mm. Like, that's... Just plenty of those. <laughs> plenty of those. The majority. Plenty of those. <laughs> But yeah, that's what's dope about Miami is you're not going to find many cloud chasers, really. Or moochers. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a great great place to be when you're networking, for sure. I agree with that. But if you're looking to go into nature, not really. Yeah, right. <laughs> what does your family think about all this? Are you like the most successful person in your family? Your whole family, your whole bloodline? <laughs> Duh. Funny enough, my... Uh... My uncle, he, he's also a millionaire, so he's been like a role model for me. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to like be like him. He was part of the, he's, he has like a corporate job, but he worked yeah. his way up in positions. But uh, no one's ever been an entrepreneur in the family. And when I first started, when I was 14, my parents, they, my mom didn't want me to do it. <laughs> so I had to do it behind her back. No mm. way. Holy no. shit. Wow. She didn't want me starting a YouTube channel. She what? said it was too risky. She didn't want me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's oh, what I was thinking, dude. Like, it, she didn't want my name out there, man. Uh, she didn't want my face and my name. She was scared of the internet. She never really knew much about it. Got you. But then eventually, as it started picking up, whenever I wanted to get into something risky, like a new mentorship or whatever it was, my, my, dad, my dad was very cautious. It wasn't until that I started making more than them where they finally were like, okay, you know what? You don't have to go to college. You do what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing. We'll, we'll step back. We'll, and they, they didn't really, they didn't motivate me to keep going, but they didn't bring me down. They just gave me my space. And I did what I did. And then I really realized how much of an impact it meant um, when I was leaving uh, to go to come here to Miami. 
I'd never seen my dad cry before, and my mom was breaking down, my dad was crying, and he was telling me how, how it was such an experience to see their son transform into, from a boy into a man, from broke to, to comfortable, and be able to get through all those hard times, and just was saying how um, it was just such a different experience. That's fucking crazy. Bro. Never expected it. That probably that probably hit hard. Yeah. That probably hit hard as fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to say. There's a lot. Have you given back to them in any like cool ways now that you have Yeah. So much about this in your life? I I try it all the time. I try to treat them. I try to especially my siblings. I try to, you know, not spoil them but show them, you know, little you, little you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fun times. And um, I wanna say it, but I don't know if they're gonna watch this. For Father's Day, I'm getting my dad something pretty big. Something uh, he's always wanted, but I can't really say it. Just say it off camera. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Father's Day? Did that just pass? Or not Father's Day. Uh, it's his birthday. birthday. Okay, when is his birthday? August 1st. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be, be like, a, like a fucking GTO or some shit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> something light. Yeah, something light. Something light. That's we'll fucking see. dope, bro. Yeah. How about you guys? What were your parents like? Well, so I don't really have a, much of a relationship with my dad, so we've never really talked about it too much like that. It's always surface level when him and I talk, but my mom is just like always, always super supportive and like, she cried when I left and shit, but like, she was just like, I didn't raise you to stay at home and not spread your wings. So go spread, yeah. go spread your wings. So I was like, all right, that's where I'm go. So she, her, her support always gave me comfort knowing that like, all right, worst case Ontario, I always have a mom that loves me. Yeah. So it's, it's very comforting having a, a loving mom. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys had a good relationship. Yeah, she's a baller. Definitely, 100%, bro. 100%. Awesome. Mom was set like so. G. Yeah, she is a baller. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. How about you, Wade? So, definitely, there was a lot of resistance because they didn't see the internet like we do. Yeah. They don't understand that they, they, the internet was such an integral part of our lives. You know, like we grew up with this. Yeah. You know, not the case for them. So, when I started to build businesses on the internet and build my agency and, and talk about dropping out of college, I was met with major resistance from both sides. But, and I think like this to a lot of people watching, like they're seeing these opportunities, right? And it, a lot of them, they're being unfortunately talked out of them yeah, it's, by their so parents. Sad. Like trust that intuition. Like these opportunities are real. Like, like so you're, real. you're sitting in front, like you're three people that like are doing it, you know? Yeah. And that have taken advantage of it. I did, like for me, it was just kind of committing to the vision, committing to my intuition, trusting that. And then once, again, similar story, once like they started seeing me like take off and like eventually surpass them, it was like cool. Like cool. almost like we're glad that you can listen to us. Yeah. Disappoint them. Uh, yeah, it's just so dope. Disappoint them now so you don't hate them later. Yeah. That's one of the best things to live by. Exactly. And, and even if you don't make it, like, right, like it, Fucking disappointed. Like, it's your a, life. You took a fucking chance. Bet yeah. On, bet on yourself, bro. Bet on yourself. Especially like this audience that you guys are so young. Like, what happens if you drop out of college, try something out, and it doesn't work out? Go back to college. Yeah. You go back to college, yeah. and that's it. There's, there's no negatives here. Yeah. I'm curious, were your parents, did you get the, did you get their, like, mannerisms, your mannerisms from them? Like, the way that you communicate and structure your sentences and all that? No. So you had to learn that. Yeah, for sure, especially like English is not my first language. Really? So, it's in Spanish, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I would say just a lot of reading. Uh, I think reading heavily influences the way in which I communicate. Yeah. Uh, besides that, just life experience. And, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's how it shapes you. Yeah, that was... It's cool. We all have like very different ways of communicating. Like you, you're very fluent. Like I, you're able to like just kind of like... like if I just drop you anywhere, like you just kind of flow. And it's really dope. Like when we were creating Create Your Reality, we had some really cool experiences where hey, we would just like get ready in a topic, and Alex was like, "I'm the person where like I need to get ready. Like I need to like have notes and outline for me content." And Alex just jumps in, and he just channels, and I'm just like, "Fuck, we did like." Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's always fun as fuck. God, I've just like I, I used to do all my school presentations the same way. I'd just be like, all right, like I, I I have like no structure usually. I'm just like, all right, I just trust myself. I'm just gonna wing it. And she usually just works out. So I, yeah. 
it's all in your head pretty much. Like, you just kind of got to, because most of the time when I'm talking right now, like, I'm not really talking, I'm listening, and it's just coming out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, it's, my, it's all subconscious, basically, because, like, you react to the moment. Exactly. I'm just, yeah. I'm listening. Like, I'm listening how you guys are listening right now. Because I'm not my thoughts, I'm just the observer of them, but right now I'm just speaking them. a different way. I, I don't know, dude. I feel like I, I think about what I say very quickly before I say But it's like so quickly that like... Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you're listening. Yeah, exactly. I think that was a fire 35 fucking minutes right there. I think so. Yeah, yeah for sure. That was fucking good. Thank you for sharing, dude. Yeah, yeah appreciate you. Yeah. I learned about both of you guys a ton. Alright, thank you guys for fucking tuning in. Hopefully you guys learned a ton because I learned a ton right there. And then trust your gut. Yeah. Summarize. Trust your gut. Take a chance on yourself. Persevere. Yep. And just believe. As long as you believe, as long as you, you believe. will succeed. This better go viral. This it should go viral. I'll post it. You post it. He'll post yeah. it. The right. biggest thing for me, dude, it's never been easier. It's never been eighteen. At eighteen, <laughs> it's never been easier to create your reality. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right, guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.